Okay, everyone. So welcome. We're going to go uh, through another alternative to practical paper. We're going to go just through the physics content again. Um, so just a reminder, you're going to have a mixture of biology, chemistry and physics. Uh, what we've noticed at the end is uh, in the last couple of years is that the physics questions come at the end of the paper. It might be worth checking that if you feel more comfortable doing the physics questions, make sure you can do them, you can do them first. And you'll be given instructions. Remember to write your full name here. Uh, your center number for us, that's the one that starts with MX. And your candidate number, that's the four digit number that's unique to you. Okay. We've read through these instructions before in a previous video. If you've not seen the last video, you can check it out. But make sure you, you, you answer all the questions. Use a black or a dark blue pen for any writing. Uh, that you use a pencil for any diagrams or graphs, that's really important. And that you don't use any erasable pens or use any correction fluids when you white out or anything like that. You're allowed to use a calculator. I would also suggest as well, really important that you bring a ruler, calculator, obviously. Can't spell calculator today for some reason. So you bring a calculator and you bring a protractor. You might not need them, but you never know. Okay, so the total mark for the question uh, question paper is 60. That means there's going to be 20 marks for physics questions. And the first question is normally biology. We'll skip through that. Obviously, you need to answer all of these in the exam. I'm just going to go through the biology ones right now. Oh, sorry, the physics ones right now. So those are the biology questions. Here we've got questions about solutions. So it looks like a chemistry problem. Again, another chemistry problem. We've got dilute hydrochloric acid in the question. So that's a chemistry problem graph problem. And here we are, question five. This is what we're going to be looking at. So it says here, question five, student determines the density of the material from which a meter ruler is, or sorry, a meter rule is made. Student measures the width, W, and the thickness, T, of the meter rule. You've got the size view here, and here's your clue. This is actual size. So you're going to have to measure this with a ruler. It says here, figure 5.1 shows the meter rule and 5.2 shows the actual size of the end of the meter rule. On figure 5.2, so literally on figure 5.2, measure the width W and the, uh, uh, to, of the meter rule to the nearest 0 0.1 centimeters. Now I can't do this here right now, but literally what you're gonna do is get a, whoops, literally what you're gonna do is get a ruler and measure this length here, from here to here, you're going to measure that length, okay, with a ruler. I can't do it right now and get the correct answer because I've zoomed in on this, so it would be pointless me doing it. But if you measured it correctly, you would get 2.4 centimeters. I need to make sure it's to the nearest one, 0 0.1 centimeters. So that is your mark for that there. If you print some of these out, if you're printing out some of the past papers and you get a different answer from what you have measured to what uh, the mark scheme says, that could be because you're printing out on a slightly different piece of paper or a different size piece of paper. And that means that the scale is slightly different. So don't worry too much about measuring ones if you're getting a slightly different answer, okay? And again, we're gonna do the same thing here. On figure 5.2, measure the thickness. So again, with a ruler, you're gonna measure from here to here, the thickness and record it to the nearest 0 0.1 centimeters, and that is 0 0.4 centimeters. So there we go, two marks out of the 20 physics marks available to get your answer there, okay? So it says here, state which of your measurements, W or T is more accurate and give a reason for your answer, okay? So which one is more accurate? Well, W is wider, so you're more likely gonna get closer to the true value. So you would say W, and because W is longer or larger in length than T for your third mark. And then it says here, calculate the volume V of the meter rule, use the equation shown. So volume, so again, you don't need to remember the equation, you're given the equations. So volume is going to equal 100 times the width 
So 2.4 times 0 0.4. You're allowed to use a calculator. So it'd be 100 times 2.4 times 0.4. And that gives us 96. So 96 cubic centimeters, okay? 96 cubic centimeters for your other mark there. So four marks already. The student places a pivot directly under the 65 centimeter mark on the meter rule so that the distance D equals 65 centimeters as shown in figure 5.3. He adjusts the position of load M until the rule is as close, close to being balanced as possible. He notes that the center of, center of load M is directly above the 72, 74.2 mark on the meter rule. Calculate the distance X1 from the center of load M to the pivot. So the students noticed that, students noticed that from here to here, so from here, so here, that is 74.2 centimeters. So the distance we're trying to find is X1. We're trying to find this distance. So that distance X1 is going to equal 74.2 minus 65.0. So we just do that on our calculator, 74.2 minus 65.0 and that gives us 9.2 yep that's right so that equals 9.2 centimeters again i'm not worrying about the units here because i can see the units at the end if this is blank if this bit here is blank that means you need to include the units describe how the student identifies the position of the center of load M on the scale of the meter rule. Um, so what we've got here, what we would suggest is you would note the length, note the length on either side uh, of the mass and find the mean value. Or find the average value for your next mark. There we go. Student moves the pivot until the distance D. Sorry about that. Some people are doing some building work outside. So I'm sorry if you can hear a little bit of background noise there. The student moves the pivot until the distance D equals 70 centimeters as shown in figure 5.4. He adjusts the load of, uh, he adjusts the load, the, sorry, he adjusts the position of load M until the rule is as close to being balanced as possible. He notes that the center of the load is directly above the 82.3 centimeter mark on the ruler. Calculate the distance X2 from the pivot. So we do the exact same thing here. So this now is, he noticed that this distance now from here to here, that is 82.3. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do 82.3 minus 70. That's going to equal 12.3 centimeters. Like so for our other mark. Use the results in C part one and C part three to calculate the mass M. Now, a lot of these times people panic a little bit because they've seen this, they've never seen this equation before. They're not sure what these values are to find M, but we've already seen them. So X2 is what we've just worked out. So if you're a little nervous or you're not unsure, just look back through the question for this specific value. There will only be one X2. So in this case, that's 12.3. X1, and again, they say it in our question, you just go to part C part one. So I'll go to C part one and it's 9.2. So M is going to equal, M is going to equal 5.7 times 9.2 plus 12.3. So M is going to equal 5.7 times 
21.5. So we just multiply that together and we get 122.55 grams. So 100 22.55 grams. And the mark scheme, we don't need to round this up because we don't need to round this to any significant figures because we're not being explicitly told. And it's only worth one mark. So it is 122.55 grams. The mass M, the value of M is uh, obtained is approximate. State two practical difficulties involved in doing this experiment that makes the measured values of X1 and X2 subject to experimental error. So first thing is it's difficult for the masses so it's difficult to exactly balance the ruler and it would be difficult to place the center of mass, center of mass, you would write center of mass, but I'm running out of space, over the correct mark on the ruler. And then it says, suggest one way which the student can check if his values of M calculated, uh, he could check his values of M calculated in C. You could use a balance. So there we go. Nice and easy. It then says here, use answers in B and C to calculate the density rho. So that symbol there, little p, that's actually called rho uh, of the material from which the rule is made. Use the equation shown. Rho equals mass over volume. Okay, so density. So we've got mass, so rho equals mass over volume. So the mass is 122.55, 5, 5, divided by, and let's find the volume. So we go back up, we'll find the volume somewhere. And so the volume there, 96. So it's 122 divided by 96, so divided by 96. And we've got here 1.2765625. That's a lot. So I'm going to round to three significant figures. So that's the three significant figures. So it's going to be 1.2. And I've got to round up 1.28. So the density would be 1.28, that's your mark there. And the units, units for density, well, mass was grams and volume. If we scroll all the way back up, the units for volume were centimeters, oops, sorry, units for volume were centimeters cubed. So it is grams per centimeters cubed, which we write like this, grams per centimeters cubed there we go that's 13 marks now i'm going to pause it there mainly because you can hear the building works going on outside <laughs> and i don't think it's probably best that i continue like this so we'll look at i'll find somewhere quieter to record this question here uh question six this is worth seven marks you can have a look at it now and i'll go through and record my own answer in a moment okay uh, so bye everyone and take care